Welcome back. This is another exciting episode of Mr. Takeda Teaches Algebra. I'm your host, Mr. Takeda, and I'm going to teach you some algebra right now. This is lesson 1.4 on absolute, absolute value equations, in which we ask the essential question, how can you solve an absolute value equation? Let's get started um, right now. Let's review a little bit about what we know about, about absolute value. Absolute value refers to uh, really the distance from zero on a number line. So if I was to ask you what's the absolute value of three, well, how far is three from zero? Well, the answer is three. But I could also ask you what's the absolute value of negative three? That distance is also 3. So it's the distance from 3 without any regards to the, um, the direction. Okay, so both of these have um, an absolute value of 3. It's not that it makes everything positive. Don't, don't think that. It's, uh, the answers, are the absolute values are always positive. Absolute values are always positive. Okay? So... And uh, let's let's see what this looks like when it comes to algebraic type of equations. Okay, so in your notes, the properties of absolute values, um, like I said, it's always positive. This this is what this means here. The absolute value of something is greater than zero, um, greater than or equal to zero. It's positive. Negative and positive um, of the same uh, value have the same absolute value. We can multiply together absolute values, um, and we can divide them as well. That's what this says here. And so when it comes to solving it, uh, we can look at this, but basically the idea here is, is that um, this, this uh, expression inside the, inside the absolute value has, has a positive value of C, but we know that this value can be either positive or negative, right? This can be either positive or negative. So we're going to solve. We're going to solve twice, and we'll we'll, uh, we'll get more into this part in our examples. Okay, so let's solve each equation. Graph the solutions. I'm not going to graph them uh, on here. Um, I'll I'll sketch maybe the first one or two. Um, solve each equation. Graph the solutions if possible. Okay, so if x minus four is positive. Um, sorry, x minus 4 equals 6, right? But we know inside here, that can also be negative. So x minus 4 can also equal negative 6. We have two cases. So usually I write these side by side, and then I just solve them. If I add 4 to both sides here, x equals 10. If I add 4 to both sides here, x equals negative 2. And those are my two solutions. For uh, example B, this says the absolute value of 3 plus one, uh, 3x plus 1 equals negative 5. Well, the absolute value of anything can never be a negative number. Remember, it's always positive. So in this case, this one is no solution. So we can just kind of uh, answer this by examination. We can just look at it and know that. This will never have a solution. Whatever we put in for x will never be true because we'll take the absolute value of it, and that will make it positive, so it can never be negative 5. Okay? Uh, let's uh, try this one here. This one is like a multi-step. We want to isolate the absolute value um, bracket on one side of the um, equal sign. So I'm going to go ahead and add 10 to both sides to get rid of the negative 10. And that will leave me uh, the absolute value of 3x plus 9 is equal to 6. Now, this case, now at this point, I'm looking at it, and I'm saying, okay, absolute value is by itself, and it's equal to a positive 6. That's fine. It's not, if it was a negative, there'd be no solution. But at this point, I can do my two cases, 3x plus 9 equals 6, my positive case, and my negative case, 3x plus 9, equals negative 6. Okay, I'm going to subtract 9 from both sides here, so 3x will equal negative 3. x equals negative 1. Over here, if I subtract 9 from both sides, 3x will equal negative 15. So x will equal negative 5. So those are my 
two solutions. So just some review, isolate the absolute value bracket first. So you want to, you're looking for something like this where the absolute value bracket is by itself on one side of the equal sign. Okay. In a cheerleading competition, so let's look at a little simple word problem here. In a cheerleading competition, the minimum length of a routine is four minutes. The maximum length of a routine is five minutes. Write an absolute value equation that represents the minimum and maximum length. Okay, so um, you know the minimum and maximum lengths. You're asked to write an absolute value equation that represents these lengths, so the four and the five. Okay, so that basically means that basically means the 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 median or the uh, the ideal length would be four and a half minutes. So if the if the if the ideal length or the well I call it the ideal length is going to equal four and a half minutes, four point five minutes, halfway between four and five. So we can write the equation like this: that this um, x that's going to be either the four or the five when we're done, minus the ideal length. So this is the actual length. This is the actual length of the routines that we're going to see. And um, the distance from the halfway point is going to be 0 0.5. Okay. So then like when I solve these, so when I add 4.5 to both sides, I'll have 5 minutes. Over here, if I subtract, if I add uh, 4.5, add 4.5 to negative 0.5, I'll have four. That's the min, and this is the max. And quite honestly, I get a little confused when I do these myself. So we'll we'll practice these in class when we come back. And let's look at one last kind of example here, and that's when we solve uh, two absolute values. Okay, and basically this idea is either the uh, we only have to we only have to change one of the cases because it's either going to be positive equals positive or negative equals negative. So uh, a x plus b equals um, a x plus b will equal the c x plus d, or it's going to be the opposite. A x plus b is going to equal to the opposite. So we'll just keep this one as is, and we just take the opposite of the other side. OK, so let's try that here. So I'm going to say 3x minus 4, whatever's in here, is going to equal, be equal to x. And it's going to be equal to the opposite of x. OK, so let's go ahead and subtract 3x from both sides over here. So uh, I'm sorry, so that's 4. Negative 4 equals negative uh, 2x. So um, negative 4 divided by negative 2 is 2. And over here, um, if I subtract 3x from both sides, negative 4 will equal negative 4x. So x will equal 1. So those are the two solutions on this one. And over here, 4x minus 10, let me put a little line through here. 4x minus 10 equals 2 times 3x plus 1. I'm going to work this way so we have more room. And then 4x minus 10 will equal 2 times um, negative 3x plus 1. OK, so those, those are the two cases. Um, 4x minus 10 equals 6x plus 2. Subtracting 4x from both sides, I have 2x over here. Subtracting 2 from both sides, I have negative 12 over here. So x equals negative 6. That's one of my solutions. And then over here, 4x minus 10 equals 2 times negative 3x minus 1. 4x minus 10 equals negative 6x minus 2. Okay, so now I can go ahead and uh, 
do what? Let's add 6x to both sides, making this 10x on this side. Let's add 10 to both sides, making this um, uh, 10 minus 2 is 8. So x will equal 8 divided by 10, which is uh, 4 fifths. Out of the way, four fifths. Um, and that's it. Those are my two solutions. Okay, well, that's it for now. Um, make sure you get those into your notes. We'll practice some more in class when we see you next time. Thanks a lot and have a great, great rest of your day.